Well, hello and good afternoon, everybody. And uh, welcome again to another one of our Pathway webinars. Um, really excited about today, actually. Establishing a culture of aspiration and optimism. Optimism <clears throat> is such an important word, isn't it? Such an important quality when you're running a school. And the person we're speaking to today, I reckon their optimism is made of oak. Uh, he's famous for it. And I can't wait to speak to him. During this conversation, if you'd like to, uh, to join in, please feel free to use the chat box. We love having your comments. You know we do. And if there's any questions, either pop them in the chat screen for everyone to see or pop them in the question and answer button. And uh, I will pose those questions to our speaker as much as I can. Uh, I know he'll be keen to take your questions and comments. Uh, if you'd like to join the discussion on social media, please do. We tend to use the uh, hashtag the whole teacher. Uh, and also, of course, if you'd like to find out anything else about uh, the Pathway program that we'll be we'll be mentioning briefly, but I'll be uh, I'll be doing that mainly at the end. I'll do a little walkthrough of the Pathway program, our new online CPD program for professional and personal development for teachers and leaders, looking at well-being and resilience, and motivation and optimism, and all those important deep down things that help us to flourish as leaders and teachers. I'll be doing that at the end of the session. But if you'd like to find out any more, please uh, click on the URL, which my colleague will share in the chat stream uh, and find out more from Discovery Education. Pathway is brought to you in partnership with the NHT uh, and Discovery Education. So it just remains really for me to, to welcome our guest, Dave McPartland, my favourite head teacher in uh, the best primary school in the country, the happiest place on earth, I think. Um, Dave, I hope you're there. It's good to see you. Hello. There he I, is. I, I said I wasn't going to do that crazy wave thing, but hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello, Mum. <laughs> hi, everybody. You okay. It's great to see you. Really good to see you. How's your day been so far, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> do you want an honest answer, Andrew? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been okay. Uh, bit, been a bit mixed, bit of a mixed bag, Andrew. Uh, yeah. We're changing okay. the skin okay. uniform today, and I, I finally revealed it to everybody. And the feedback has generally been very positive, but obviously for some people, that element of changing something that is so steeped in tradition, okay. um, it's uh, I think it's it's freaked one or two people out. Would be and are you wearing it now? Is that something I, I that am, you're I'm wearing? Wear, uh, yeah, I am wearing. Um, nice. This will be the this will be the uniform look and. And then the flake fleet on the back. Oh, um, look at this that. is our thing. Dare to dream. We want our kids to dare oh, to dream. That's in your face. Well, it's a real team spirit there. And I think when you're wearing one of those, it's rather like being in the All Blacks, isn't it? You're so proud to wear the, to wear the jersey. I can really see yeah. that. Yeah, yeah we, we've cool. kind of reflected a lot over the last year on uniform, on, on everything. And we just figured that if you were to, to design uniform all over again, I'm not convinced you would put boys in grey trousers or girls in skirts. It's not the most practical. And actually, you know, it's kind of conditioners, conditioners yeah, to think that's what uniform should be. That's yeah. what smart looks like. Um, so we just try to do things a bit more practical and, and almost feel like they're in team colours. You know that sense of belonging that you have, which you do have with uniform. But so this is a, a this is an elaborate plan, so that you don't have to wear a tie anymore, isn't it? Really, <laughs> I, I, I kind of. I don't know about you. I'm looking at you. You're not wearing a tie. I think we've transitioned from shirt and tie to I quite like the just the shirt. Quite, like, you know, quite like right. Normal. Quite um, right. Got to feel. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? In the summer, we we, we all we, you know, as a man, you're expected. I seem to be expected to wear a suit or a blazer and a trousers. And the reality is, I've started wearing shorts. I have nice tailored shorts in the summer. Good um, lord, That's I, a I know. Thought. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. but let, let's not go there, Andrew, shall we? <laughs> well, for those who who aren't familiar with you or uh, or your knees, why don't we why don't we just briefly ask you to just sort of tell us a little bit about your professional journey to date because it's a really interesting one and how you got to where you are now. Yeah, uh, grew up in Hartlepool in the northeast. Uh, spent right. what five, about eight years teaching in Stockton, uh, Stockton and Tees. Um, two schools over there, deputy headship over there. Moved over here, family reasons, over to Morecambe, um, and I was mm -hmm. uh, deputy head there, then acting head, and I've had five years uh, headship of a relatively affluent relatively middle class area um up there and then i've had five years as the head of flake fleet primary school in fleetwood uh, and our claim to fame is uh, that we we won britain's got talent um did indeed Six two years ago it? now though two years ago quite a claim to fame well we'll get into um <clears throat> during this discussion 
some of the madcap ideas you've had and, and why you're doing that? Because it's all part of a deliberate strategy, I think, which is an excellent one. So we'll kind of get into that. And why don't we kick off with that brilliant phrase on your jersey, which is dare to dream. And your, your dare to dream culture, I think, has become really quite renowned now. What does that phrase mean to you in, in the co- context of the school, really? Uh, I think, um, I mean, on, on one level, um, I, I just want our children to grow up daring to dream, um, to, to genuinely believe that anything is possible. When I when I started here, um, I, I used to get parents quite a lot saying, I can't do that. I'm from Fleetwood or parents or ch- children, staff. So well, we can't do that. And, and for some reason, I, I've kind of gone through my life, particularly after university, thinking that anything is possible when you're willing to give it a go. And and I just want, I, I genuinely want our children to believe that it's the whole idea of self-efficacy, that if you work hard enough, that you can achieve what you set out to. Um, and, and at the same time, running along that absolutely parallel, um, you have Dare to Fail, that our children, they've, they've got to be willing to put themselves out there but actually take some risks and, you know, the, the, alongside that, you've got psychological safety, that it's okay to to get things wrong, to make mistakes. We own that, we learn from it. Um, it kind of, it, it's become our school, I don't want to use the word motto, but it kind of a, a way of being almost a, 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 an ethos, a culture. Um, and, and, and that started a couple of years back. And now, now if I was to go into the, the you know, the, the staff room and say, guys, we're going to have a zoo with elephants and giraffes. Um, they'd be like, right, where are we keeping them, Dave? Uh, how, you know, what, 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 how do we feed them? Where, where do you get them from? Can you get them on eBay? Um, and, and genuinely, um, there has been a bit of method to the madness over the last couple of years. It, it works for us. But now when we come up with an idea, there's not, not really much going to stop us at least giving it a go. And if we don't pull it off, then we probably had lots of fun trying along the way. Absolutely. I love the idea of dare to dream, but also dare to fail. I think they go hand in hand, don't they, really? And, and maybe if you don't mind telling us a little bit about the context of your school and your community and why perhaps dare to dream, a dare to dream philosophy is so important there. What are some of the challenges for some of your families, perhaps? Yeah, um, it's 50, 60 percent uh, free school meals. Um, wow, that's high. What, yeah. what might be considered to be a disadvantaged area. Um, and I'm always conscious, I'm not doing the area down. You know, I'm, I'm proud of my working class roots. I grew up in Hartlepool. Uh, we didn't have a huge amount growing up. Um, and it's just about encouraging these aspirations in children. Um, you know, going alongside the data gym, we, we try to get the children out and about as much as possible. You know, it's like, I love taking the children to Manchester or to Liverpool. You're showing them the world that, that's out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and just challenging the thinking and, and giving them as much exposure to the world as we possibly can. can. And it, yeah, I, I guess it was just about raising aspirations um, in our own unique way. You're broadening horizons as well, you know. So so when, I know we're not going to dwell on the whole Britain's Got Talent thing for too long because you're so much, much, much more than that. But I am intrigued, actually, which is, um, I mean, we've gone off piste already and we knew we would. But when you when you floated that idea, was it you that floated that idea or was it, was it one of your lovely children? No, it was, uh, it was the children. Um, we, came up with, we, we came up with the dreams list. Um, and, and the dreams list was, uh, we just wanted the children to come up with a dream. And some of them wanted to be a Disney princess. So we did that. Some of them wanted to feed the homeless. There's so many different things that, you know, vets, archeologists, and some we managed to do relatively easily. And some took a bit more imagination and we're a bit more out there. So we, one of them was, we, we, one of them wanted to be a pop star. A couple of them did. So we ended up having a big flake fest festival. We, we had a oh, stage, wow. and lights and fireworks, you know, wow. completely got carried away. Um, and then we went for Christmas number one. And, and we put this application for Britain's at Talent, thought nothing more of it, thought we're never going to get anywhere. And the gods were shining, you know, looking down upon us. And we, and we got this audition. Um, and and the reality was we, we came up with it ourselves. They, I'm sure they can be quite controlling at times, but we were allowed to, you know, do whatever we liked. Um, I'm not sure that I'd kids popping out of council wheelie bins before. Um, there was an element <laughs> of, no, you know, of novelty to it. Uh, and, and it, and it. And it just worked. We, we didn't go wanting to go through to the fans. We didn't even talk about that. You know, that was a stupid idea. You know, it's ridiculous. Um, and, and I think that's why it worked. I just wanted our children 
you know, half the Royal Free Swimmers, just to go to the Lowry, stand on this stage, you know, the, this, you know, the glamorous, glitzy, you know, lights everywhere and an audience of 1,500 people and, wow. and get to talk to David Williams, Simon Cowell, you know, just have that little moment. And the plan was to get on the stage. The next bit would be we make the, like, the, you know, a snippet on the show or even better, we get a decent little segment. And that was, that was it. You know, we didn't think for one minute that we'd get a golden buzzer and go through. But we, we did. We made these incredible <laughs> memories. And, and these children can always go through life thinking that they were golden buzzer, you know, that, that they had that, that special moment, that life-changing moment where they genuinely that dreams come true because that's what it was. I'm not over, overstating it. It, we, it was a dream. You know, we, we, we're just a normal school from up north. We, we shouldn't be getting a golden buzzer going through to, to the finals of Britain's Got Talent. But we did. <laughs> and what about the um, this nativity play? Why don't you tell us about that? Because it's quite extraordinary, actually. Yeah, the the the, the nativity. Um, there was two elements to it. We um we right. decided back in September, October, that there's probably a strong chance we weren't going to be able to do a, a nativity. Um, so we thought, well, how about we we write our own nativity? Then it was then it became let's try and do it different. We'll write a COVID nativity. And we'll, right. you know, we'll do it as if it was, you know, COVID is around at the time of Jesus being born, which is a bit right. irreverent, but, but it, we think it was respectful. Um, and then, then it was like, right, well, how about we get some celebrity cameos? Um, you know, what would that look like? Right. We'll, you know, the big, will BBC News do a little segment announcing it for us? And, and we started firing off cheeky emails, just really friendly emails. I think everyone thinks we've got this celebrity contact list. Because no, really have. we just... We, we sent cheeky emails off and, and bit by bit, people were like, yeah, yeah, I, we'll do it for you. So we had BBC, John Thompson from Core Feet and lots of other things. Oh, I love John Thompson. Um, yeah. Pease and Susanna did one. Right. Um, Phil and Holly did one. Amanda Hall did one. You know, everybody, and I, pretty yeah. much everybody that we asked got back to us straight away and said, yeah, yeah, we're up for it. So we ended up, um, oh, donkey. We managed to get a donkey that was on furlough from Blackpool. Um, so we had a, Mary and Joseph going around the corridor on a donkey. Um, and we ended up having this spectacular, that, that the reality is, it nearly ended up on the telly. It, we, somebody got wind of what we were doing and it was literally that close to it. Yeah. To, um, well, next year. And, and, yeah. And, and all we were trying to do is that when you do something, do it properly, you know, really show the kids that the sky is the limit. And nobody might, you know, nobody might reply to the emails, but they did. Um, and we had lots of children involved in it with the, the parents and the community. We could celebrate this little thing that we we, we pulled off. Uh, and it was something to get us through COVID. It's been tough. It's been, you know, it's been mm. very monotonous and boring. I don't know what you think. But oh, it's been God, it's just been rubbish. Um, it's been rubbish. On, um, on LinkedIn, I remember, I saw this delicious just terrific video of your your colleagues cleaning the school ready for the children to return to put to music was yeah where did that come from yeah, I, we do we, we do love a good social media well, video see. and and i think uh, you do you know i've said this to you before but you get paranoid and you worry that people question the the, the motives behind it and why you do it and the reality is that's a really good way of you know telling people what we're like. The, the 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 cleaning video was staff acting a little bit silly, showing that it was you know normal services resuming. School's still going to be a fun, friendly, welcoming place. It got you know we could show what school would look like, and we released it. I think it was the day before that we came back to school. And the whole idea was to kind of break the ice a little bit, you know, show that it's going to be okay, that we don't have to be very very serious, and you know we you know COVID's really COVID's it is very serious, but we don't need to be scared about it. We need to do things yeah. to keep it all safe. Yeah. Um, and we just put that out there. You know, we it's, it's nice for staff to, to get involved in these things. You know, we all like an excuse to be daft um, and to have a bit of fun. And, and I think that's been a bit lacking over the last year. You know, it's, well, I think, like I said, it's been very, very monotonous. I think there's quite a bit of strategy behind this. I think it's so much more than, um, well, it's not in any way uh, a plan to, 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 to boost profile and, uh, you know, keen to, to to seek fame and fortune. I think for me, from what I'm seeing, it's a deliberate strategy to constantly help children to feel good about themselves, yeah, isn't it? And, and, and their and colleagues as well. Genuine. You're good at that. It works for us. But the things that we do on, on social media, you know, the things that are a little bit out there, it just hopefully it shows that we don't take ourselves too seriously. We're very approachable, warm, friendly. We want the children to enjoy coming to the school. And, and sometimes some of the things that we do, they're not necessarily going to have this tangible um 
you know, academic outcome or something that's necessarily measurable. Um, but actually, it just means that they feel like they belong to something or that they're proud of their school or they're happy at school or that they'll take memories from school. And I think all of those things together helps them have a better experience that, you know, that, and ultimately it's, it's going to help them at school. But it's just a very different way of doing it, I think. Well, why don't we think about, um, you know, a typical day, a, a rainy Tuesday in, in February, um, I know it's not February, by the way. They say a rainy Tuesday in, in March. In. But um, when you, you're not preparing for, for one of these big events, perhaps, it's, it's what I might term an ordinary day. I'm really keen to dig a little bit deeper into the success indicators. The, the, what are the measures that show you as a leader that your culture of aspiration is working? What, what, what evidence is there? Do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, it, in terms of wandering around the school, um, we're, I think all schools are always going to have challenging behaviour at times. Right. Um, but right. I think generally, I don't have to make a big deal of the fact that we're taking visitors around when they're allowed. You know, you, you will come and see us as we are. I love the fact that the children will come and say hello. They will engage. They want to show you their work. You get a nice right. big smile from them and right. the staff. Um, that it's just it's just a happy warm pleasant place to be and i think that the danger when you try to cultivate that culture is that you can become too warm and friendly and cuddly um and that you know you might not have the difficult conversations so, so marrying up the two and balancing them i actually think they go hand in hand if you've got that relationship and that culture you can actually i think you, you know it's easy to have that that conversation um i think you're going to see you know staff are proud of the building it's looked after it's cared for um the the children are keen to get involved in the lessons there's just that buzz i think when you when you go in in schools you just get a feel for the school very very quickly um and hopefully what people see online or elsewhere that that that, that kind of marries up but i guess you know if you're looking for things that are more tangible the results have gone up you know over the last couple of, of years um, numbers on roll have, have gone up year on year, you know, quite quite significantly. Um, we're, we're full um, st- re- recruitment and retention. In five years, two members of staff have left um, and wow. both have wanted to come back. One and three, one's retired, um, two left, wanted to come back fairly soon after. We, we're back. a very, very happy place, but we're not too comfortable that we don't challenge ourselves. How about, I'm just thinking of those other measurable indicators. How about attendance? I bet your attendance is high, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, t- attendance, um, it, attendance is good. Um, we, we've improved steadily over the last couple of years. It's probably got to a point where it's you know, plateaued t- to a degree that it, it's just generally very, very good. Um, I think the other thing in terms of uh, an outcome, I think the relationship that we have with our parents, um, the, the trust that we have, um, the, the fact that we don't get a huge amount of complaints other than when you're changing uniform, um, <laughs> but we'll not go there. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't know if I've answered your question, to, to be totally honest. But, you know, no, the, the thing that it's often would measure us on, um, then, then yeah, it, 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 it does work. But of course, you're still worried that, that offset are going to come in and not get what you do. Um, and I think that they'll see the seven, eight nurture spaces we've got around the school. The wow. fact that we've got a team of five full-time members of staff who just support the mental health and well-being of, of the wow. children. Really, and two more, two two more coming to you know two apprentices to support wow. that team. That that's a huge investment, but it works. If they're not, it's like us. If we're not in a good place, we're not going to do a very good job. You know, a good job of of, of our work, are we? And I suppose if you've built those relationships and and you you place trust you know so highly as you do um it also means i suppose when when you encounter something you know uh, frankly an existential threat like the one we've just experienced in the last 12 months you're able to pivot and adapt more and because you're more agile when we've spoken before i should explain to those who are watching um we were lucky enough to interview dave in uh in a learning for now conference here at discover education which my colleague will probably put the link in the chat because i'd love you to see that it's still on youtube and you can watch that but when when we chatted in that conference dave you talked really eloquently i thought um about this idea of brittleness whereas being agile means it's less brittle do you want to just expand on that briefly because it's a really good point i'll try and be really like poetic and articulate in it but but it's just that whole idea that is i think there's there's this relatively outdated concept now about being a leader you need to be strong and rigid in your thinking and narrow right this is what i want 
And actually, that rigidity leads to fragility. It means that you're brittle. Yeah. When you've suddenly got to change, if you're really strong, right. I think it breaks a lot more quickly. Whereas if you you know, if you just approach life with a healthy curiosity, with a, you know, recognizing that change can be healthy as long as it's not too much and it's managed in a, in a positive way. You know, that, that kind of culture, if you have that culture going into something like COVID, then you can adapt much more quickly than if things are very rigid and, and formal um, I, I think we're, we're very good on, on good at reflecting on, on things that work and that don't um, yeah it's just flexibility has been key hasn't it because there's actually been lots of opportunities and lots of things the last year we've had we've, we've had absolute free reign to do what works for our schools we've got free right. reign to be guided by our values in many ways right. Right. Lots of, of things that are extraneous we, we had to forget about because actually we needed those children in. We needed to communicate with the parents. Um, in, in many ways, I think we've really focused on the things that matter over the last year. And and, and I hope we, we hang on to that yeah. moving forward. Other heads have said that, actually, that I've had the, the good fortune to speak to in the last few months. Many have said a similar thing, actually. And what interests me is um, we've heard a lot about continuity of learning. We've, we've, you know, we've benefited from, schools have benefited from a whole range of different resources that have been brought in, some of which from us, some of which from other providers, to enable you to continue that learning provision. But what about continuity of culture? How have you managed to continue to develop this brilliant culture in your school when you're apart? Do you need to be together in order to build that? Um, have you done it? Remotely. I think, I mean, over the last year, we've, we've had, you know, everybody's done it differently, but we've had times where we've been in our teams. For, we had four right. teams, staff split up into four pretty right. much. Um, and we had we had Facebook Workplace. Um, it's brilliant. Not, right. not many people know about it, but there's a, an actual Facebook for the workplace, and it's very locked down. That, that worked really, really well for us. But it's a lot more interactive and soft and friendly um, when compared to emails. That that worked a lot. Um, we, we we when we were in school, we had you know like a, a Love Island fire pit where we toasted marshmallows. When we did have parents' evening, we were able to we social distance. We had pizzas together. We had people. To, you know, we, we all know who it was, but we'd send secret little presents around when they thought that somebody needed it. Um, when we had a big outbreak of COVID back in January, we we agreed that we would try and very frequently keep in touch with staff and ring them up and check that they were okay. Um, we put sessions with the psychologist in place, group sessions. Right. We'd offer it, you know, little one-on-one -on -one sessions as well. Um, I think part of communications, we, we tried doing it on Zoom. It was always better when we could do it in school, in the hall, or particularly outside. Um, but even, even just on a morning, going around and saying good morning to people on, a, on an afternoon, yeah. um, I think it's not been about... The, keep you know developing the culture even more i think we were very lucky that we were already at that point um and i think that's why we've come through it relatively unscathed and actually moved the school forward in many ways because of it yeah i mean we still we we did a big staff lineup change we, we changed staff you know the year groups that were in quite some big changes we've introduced quite a few things for the curriculum we've decorated most of the school we've actually done quite a lot moving forward um but it's how it's been managed so do you think, just talking about that cabinet reshuffle that you've just done, you said, do you think it's meant that maybe some of your colleagues have been less resistant to change than they might otherwise have been because everybody's had to pivot and change? Or, or were your staff otherwise, I mean, before pan the pandemic, they were already embracing change and innovation and so on anyway, were they? They probably were, weren't they? Uh, that, is a, that is a brilliant question. Um, I don't know. I, th I think we all realise... Uh, we all, we all want certainty in our lives. And I think over the last year, we've realised how much we crave certainty. Right. Um, right. We told staff about the changes very early, much, much earlier than we normally would. I can't right. remember exactly when it was, but it may have even been around Easter. So staff had that certainty. They knew what was yep. going to happen. I think they had the opportunity to get the teeth stuck into it and form the relationships with people. Because in many ways, at that, at that time, lockdown one, I think in a way we felt we had a bit more time on our hands by the most recent lockdown, online learning had really kicked in and things had kind of gone back to normal. I, I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know. Yeah. We did it. We did have um, the psycho Mike who comes in, our psychologist. And um, we did sessions as, as the new team that they were allowed to get together in their new teams 
Um, and they went through the profiles in terms of the preferred mindset, the, the preferred behavior, and you know, shared with the team what they liked, what they didn't like. And they, we can in a way, we kind of did year group changes better than we ever have done, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, don't know. I still, I'm not sure I answered that one, but I, I don't know. It went well, very well. Um, well, you, you did recognize that, that how much the school has grown. And I think that's, that's such a positive message when we're surrounded by, not surrounded by, but certainly within the last three or four weeks, there's been this sort of negative narrative, really, hasn't there, about the sort of, you know, generation of lost generation, sentenced to a lifetime of catch up, you know, things like that. And whilst I don't want to in any way underplay the extraordinary impact that it's had on everybody's well-being. Similarly, there have been some ways in which we've grown, and you you, you seem to be really recognising that. Yeah, I think, I think it's, that, it's which is this I, I, I mean, at the moment, staff are shattered. Staff are so of tired. Course they are. And, I, and I think of course parents they are. are. I think children, we're all very, very tired. We're fatigued after the last year. Of course. But now, as we start to come through the other side, hopefully, I think we've, we're now starting to look back and look at look at the things that have worked. You know, so for example, parents' evening, um, we had even higher engagement rates than we've ever had because actually we could do it over Zoom or, or yeah. on the phone. A parent, you know, you, you yeah. can do it at home. You can turn your camera off and you sat in your pajamas. Happy days. You don't even have to leave the house and get you know soaking wet in the rain. Um, you know, some of the things that we did with new stars, we did some of it online. We did some of it in person. Um, you know, you know Zuka, I got to know you. I, we, we would have never met. Not never. Yeah, hopefully, you know, it was meant to be, Andrew. Um, yeah, my world's changed. I mean, it infinitely changed. You know, I'm a, it's a beautiful thing we got going on. But, Did but he, uh, could, can I have a hoodie? How, how much, we now how we much can have a virtual brew anytime. How much are they? I mean, if I, you know, throw a few quid, if I make a donation to the school library, could I have a hoodie? <laughs> We can, Andrew. I'm sure we could send sure. you send you a hoodie. So you love a hoodie. I think it's great. Oh, yeah, but you know, <clears throat> we've talked and we've achieved. I mean, we haven't finished yet, but we've achieved really what I really wanted to achieve. You know, in in this one, because you know, I've been a head teacher and, and not for as long as you were actually. But and I, I I'm a fully paid up member of the of the fan club of this idea of a culture of aspiration and dare to dream. But so much of that is intangible. And so much of that is quite exciting and it gets the headlines. And I really wanted to dig in to find out all the other things you're doing. And you're doing an awful lot that doesn't make the headlines. I've been writing things down. Like you said, you mentioned just briefly, Mike, the psychologist. Okay, so that, the fact that you call him Mike, that means he's obviously a very regular visitor to your school. Oh, got- yeah, doc, Dr. Mike Rotherham. Uh, if anybody is, uh, he's amazing. So you um, rate that. I mean, you value that, oh. don't you? How do you afford that? that we spend um, on our profiles in terms of, like, like I said, how we be, we, we all. Oh, hello. Is that we take that into, we take that into other conversations, into other situations. And, and when other people don't behave like we want them to, we can, we can all as humans, we find that quite a challenge sometimes because why don't they do it like we do it? Because we do it the best. But we're all very, very different. And and that the last year through COVID, we've played to that. We, we've got your staff who are very prudent and worriers. Well, actually, they're the brilliant, yeah, they're brilliant for going through your risk assessment. Whoa, Dave, what about this? You know, we, we need to think about that. Um, you've got your optimistic ones who are like, you know, let's let's innovate, let's do things differently. You've got your ones who are very organized and, and, and will come up with plans for, you know, I'm not an organizer, I'm not a manager, I'm rubbish at paperwork, but I've got staff who are brilliant at that. And and that's what we've invested heavily in over the years, knowing ourselves and knowing others and knowing how that works as a group dynamic. And, yeah. and when yeah. when school's closed, you know, with, with 24 hours notice, we had to completely reinvent school. When we sat around that big table, because we, did, we, we didn't know socially distance, you know, social distancing at that point, it worked and you could see that playing out. You could see all the different personality types playing out in action. And we challenged each other. We argued with each other. But eventually what we came up with, we, we, I thought was a really strong plan and it, and it worked because we knew ourselves and because we knew other people. Um, yeah, it's been a cool. really, really good period to, to reflect, I think, o- over the last year. So you've, uh, you've put in place, clearly, again, this is you know, beneath the headlines and the, the events and so on, the amazing events program that you've just been, been launching is extraordinary. But beneath that, you've got a visiting psychologist. You've got five soon-to-be-seven wellbeing champions within the school, whatever you call, call them. 
Um, so that shows, again, that you value that. You've got n multiple different nurture rooms as well. Presumably, you've yeah. got your, your core values advertised everywhere. Do you talk about them in assemblies? Yeah, 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 yeah we do. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you my new big idea, which I'm obsessed with. Here we today. go. Hold on um, to your seat. I've just, I just, I find myself thinking we're so lucky. We've got this beautiful building. We're really lucky. Beautiful oh, right. building, nice big grounds. Yeah, we're closed on an evening, a dance studio. We're, we're closed on an evening. We're closed on a weekend. And at the minute, what we're looking into is, can we turn the hall into a coffee shop? During the day, it's a hall. We can still use it for PE and things. But on an evening, well, when the, the you know the end of the school day, they walk around your one-way system. Can they come and have a, a coffee or a hot chocolate, a piece of cake, and we can actually engage with our parents that way. We can have, we can encourage. Um, you know, Citizens Advice Bureau or the Housing Association, we can kind of engage with parents in a different way. We, we've got these grants. We should be opening up on a weekend. You know, can we get groups going on in, in the dance studio? Can we can we have like our own little art gallery space outside? You know, almost like a park. Imagine your skills were like parks where on a weekend yeah. you can come and just chill out with other families, um, other, you know, take them for a little walk. Love that. We, we haven't that. got that round here. And I, I feel like we, we serve our community and it's just a shame that we've got these amazing resources that aren't used for quite a lot of the time. So, so, if, holidays. so if and, and when, well, when rather than if you have a governor visit, you have, um, I used to have standards and excellence officers visiting quite frequently and so on, or, um, uh, or anyone else that you account to, uh, and just an inspection, you know. And you're asked that brilliant question, you know, so how will this particular thing that you're doing at the moment impact on learning outcomes? How will it shift the data up? How will it affect the attainment of progress data and the people's ability to reach national? What do you say? Um, Be patient. I've got enough data to show that it does work. Um, right. The point right. is because you're trying to balance, for me, the kind of things that we're doing, they will have the biggest impact over time. And over time. And a long time to put in place. You've kind of got to play the short game and the long game. You've got to play you've both. Got to get the results yeah. to be in the right place, you've got to do but both. then not, not sell your soul to the devil and stop doing the things that you genuinely believe that are going to make a difference. A and, and I think it's trying to... To, to, to put that narrative across. And actually, maybe at this point in time, a lot more than we've ever had, certainly in the last decade or two, maybe Ofsted are a bit more receptive to that. I think when you go on social media, there's definitely an appetite for doing things differently. We all recognise that the mental health and well-being of, of everybody, children, staff, the community is, is more important than it ever has been. Um, yeah, I think you do you, you do need the data, whatever you, you said, but it's having the, the, the feedback from the parent in terms of this what you yeah. know, we, we do a lot of right. we do a lot of things. We've we've rehoused families, we've we've got bedding for them, we've we fed them, um, we've done all sorts of things. And ultimately you could argue that that's not our th you know, that's nothing to do with us. But if we look after that mum and dad who then looks after the child and that child is in a better place, then actually it does that benefit. It's everybody that benefits, isn't it? Completely agree. Um, but that that happens over time. You know, that, that doesn't happen suddenly or over a year or two. That that's a much much longer game that I think we're playing. So what's just to close? Really, I'm just fascinated to know what um, what's in your entry? What's in your what's top of your priorities list for the summer term? So many um, things, I suppose. I think I think when we talk about catch up, we can catch up on. Right. I'm with the friends, um, getting them out on, on school trips and, and the, the showing them the world because that's closed down over the last year. Um, yeah. We do need yeah. to figure out what these children ha have missed or, or what they need. We need to figure out what that looks like, the, the tutoring schemes that are out there. Um, how do how excuse me, how, how do we help them um, get to where they need to? Um, but I think it's also sticking to our guns that, the, the PSHE, we now do two lessons a day on PSHE, more mindfulness things. We just need to get them in the best possible mental state, you know, the, 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 the well-being um, in order to, 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 to do the rest. They're tired. I think they're tired, the children. You know, they're, they're not used to getting up early and not being able to feed all day. Um, so if I, were, um, if I were Mr. Williamson then, um, and you had, I mean, I'm sure at some stage you will have a one-to-one, -one, I've no doubt. I'm sure oh, you will. I'm, not sure. <laughs> I'm sure you I'm sure you will. But if you were to have a one-to-one, -one, what sort of questions might you ask or what what things might you say or shout? I think oh, <laughs> it would take a lot of thinking that. before that conversation. Um, I, th I think I think I, I would be trying to convince him that 
every professional that I come across would agree that it's a time to reflect. Yeah. It's a time to do things differently. Good. It's it's an opportunity that we really, really mustn't miss yeah. because we all agree that we need to do differently. We, we need to have a great emphasis on mental health and well-being. Um, we just need to, you know, we need to do Ofsted differently. We need to do that accountability different. You know, I, I don't think I should have to, when we go into the next Ofsted window, I do get very nervous. I do suffer with my anxiety. I worry that we're going to mm. have the wrong inspector coming in, you know, not getting what we're about when I'm so proud, so, so proud of what we do. I just think that I should go to bed at night knowing that that's enough and that they will recognise it. So I think we just need to reflect on how we do things, not not so high stakes, you know, where school can live live or die on, on the back of an Ofsted report. Um, I think we need to reflect. Uh, Fed Ed are doing, are doing lots of brilliant stuff um, in, in terms of, of what our children need moving forward. And the curriculum, you know, you think about what, what skills do our children need? The curriculum changes so slowly, yet technology changes so quickly. And, and we need to give our children the, the skills to succeed in life, I guess. Um, there's bigger yeah, brains out there than me that are going to come up with better answers than me. Um, but well, I we, threw that one at you, as I have done all afternoon. But I was just intrigued to know, because that would be an interesting discussion. And I'd love to be a fly on the wall at that discussion when it happens which i'm sure it will at some stage um well it's just been terrific and it's been quite a privilege actually i have to say you're the most human head teacher i know and you're you. very able to to share your vulnerability as well as your ambition and your aspiration and that's so refreshing and i'm sure on behalf of everybody on this call uh, it's such an inspiring experience chatting to you in your hoodie and you haven't put your hood on yet and tied it up i was ex expecting you no to do i'm not doing that very professional tonight maybe you use that to hide when you need to <laughs> <laughs> it's been brilliant absolutely brilliant and i really hope we can do it again and if anybody on the call didn't get a chance to see dave at that learning for now conference the link's in the chat do go on and watch it um again it's been such an interesting discussion so thank you very much and uh, you, we're going to have to part company for now but hopefully we'll do this again next time and um, thank you so much. I've enjoyed it. Keep Thanks. doing what you're doing. Inspiring. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> Until later. Uh, bye. Well, wow, wow, wow. So brilliant, brilliant, brilliant that Dave was able to join us. And I really hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I'm going to just spend five minutes for those who wish to stay um, just to uh, tell you about one or two other bits and pieces. Um, and maybe have a quick walk through the Pathway program that we mentioned briefly. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention is that we've got another uh, webinar coming up with uh, the brilliant Phil Birchinall, who's actually a colleague of mine, actually, again, like me, has taught for over 20 years um, and is very experienced in IT and in uh, all things uh, ed tech. And uh, particularly uh, now he works in augmented reality and virtual reality and so forth. I don't mean he works in virtual reality. He actually creates virtual reality and AR apps. Um, but uh, it's going to be a really interesting discussion, actually. And Phil has also uh, done a, a pathway course, actually, on the EdTech, the learning amplifier. So we're going to talk about being immersed in learning. <clears throat> and that's uh, in April, which will be here before we know it, I think. So I really hope you're able to join us for that. Do uh, go onto the website and uh, book a place. It's free again. And that's going to be a really insightful discussion when we're going to talk about engagement in learning and investment. Uh, I'm just going to spend five minutes talking about Pathway for those who aren't familiar with it. Many people on the call probably are by now. It's a new online CPD program, which is brought to you in partnership with the NHT. Um, it's been brilliant working with the NHT, actually. They have such similar values to us, and they've been very, very keen and passionate, as we are, to support teachers' well-being and their motivation and their aspiration and the skills auditing and career mapping and all those important things that are very important. It's not a self-indulgence to uh, look after yourself as a teacher. Indeed, I think the pupils in front of you and your families at home deserve the best version of you. So we're really trying to look into how we do that holistically online, which I'm really proud that I think we've done that. So we've created this very extensive online program for, for teachers and leaders. Um, and it's essentially really to help you to become a reflective practitioner. We really want to drill down to understand exactly what reflective practice looks like. What does it actually mean? So we begin by helping you orientate your career, by looking at the, your motivation, your professional skills, both in teaching and in leading. If you're an aspirational leader or you're currently a school leader uh, or a teacher or both, you can use these different audits to actually uh, self-assess your skills, 
find out your areas for development and the, the strengths and so forth, and then use our career mapping tools to map out your career ambitions in the professional roles that you seek and also the extracurricular activities and all those other ways in which you bring added value to your school. Where do you want to push those and grow those in the years ahead? And then thirdly, most importantly, your health and well-being goals. So our career map helps you to write all of those things down for the years ahead, and hopefully you'll keep to them. And then we help you to navigate your way there using many, many different online courses, which I'll talk to you about in a minute, all part of the annual subscription, if you like, and more being added uh, every year. And then finally, there's the reflection section where we uh, work with uh, renowned experts in well-being and critical reflection. And we've created this course to help you with your well-being uh, and to help you run your own research projects in school so you can develop the well-being of your colleagues as well and uh, using critical reflection skills. And then the all important advice hub from the NEHT. And we think when you combine all of those three sections together, we think that's an unusual and unique offering, which is much more about empowerment than just development, because I think it's got to be about your agency and your efficacy. Uh, I've always said in teaching, and I had 21 years as a teacher and a leader, um, it isn't just what you know, it's actually what you can do with what you know that counts. And I think that's inextricably linked to how you feel. And that needs to be recognized in CPD, I think. So the orientation section is the motivation program, as I said, there's the skills audits and there's that career mapping tools. Then there's many, many different online CPD courses uh, brought to you from uh, experts. And of course, because it's discovery education, uh, working with the NHC, we've created uh, lots and lots of interesting films. Uh, many of the, all of these courses actually have multiple different films, which are really engaging and really interesting to watch. These are not narrated PowerPoints with an expert telling you how to do it on the assumption that you're not doing it well enough. Um, I think sometimes too much CPD is, has been like that, certainly in my experience. Um, these are much more in interesting to watch. And one of those courses, actually, I had the privilege of making myself, which was uh, on the power of culture, which I thought was relevant to today. I've always, always been obsessed with uh, culture. And uh, I think Dave is a leading light in uh, creating a positive culture in your school. So we, we drill into that a little bit more and we find out uh, what the uh, what the power of culture is in school. And we have some roundtable discussions with uh, lots of people uh, to talk about their own experience of school culture as a child, really, and how it helped to shape their character. And their, uh, their Weltanschauung, their worldview, uh, so powerful is, is school culture that it does that. So that's a really interesting course, I hope. These are some of the other courses that we offer, all of which are part of your annual subscription, if you like. Um, many, many different uh, titles. We haven't gone for subject-specific courses deliberately. We've gone for more generic titles and themes within the field of leading and teaching, though more subject-specific courses will come, I'm sure. But we thought we'd go for these big ones to begin with. Um, and every course is built up of a series of different units and each unit has a, a film. It might be a round table or a one to one, another one to one or an interview with the uh, with the, the course leader, the expert, if you like. And then there's an intro and outro that bookends them. And then every unit has uh, different activities where you read the introduction, you watch the film, you read the thought piece, which is a piece of academic writing with uh, proper academic references and recommended uh, bibliography there. And then answer those questions for reflection all the way through pathway. You are asked coaching questions, which encourage you to reflect and you write your own reflections and responses. They're bookmarked and saved just for you. And you can come back to them again and again. Each course does not suddenly close when you've completed it. They're saved and you can keep coming back to them and refreshing your, your answers as you, as you progress through your career. And then finally, the reflection section, which I think is an absolute jewel in the crown. It's with uh, Professor Tim O'Brien and Dr. Dennis Guiney. Many people on the call may know Tim, particularly, or, or Dennis, and their brilliant work that they've done with schools in the, in the world of well-being. Um, both uh, very professional, very experienced experts working in special schools for many, many years, actually, as leaders, and then working in the field of psychology and human development um, and uh, at UCL and uh, IOE. Uh, done some terrific work for us. So I'm really pleased we we're able to commission them to create a unique course for us. Again, asking you questions throughout and watching the films and reading the thought pieces. And then finally, the NHT Advice Hub, which is filled with uh, the very latest advice that you can rely on. It's all authored by Guy Dudley and his team at the head of, head of advice at the NHT. And it uh, falls into those different categories. And each category houses many, 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 many dozens and dozens of PDF advices, PDF pieces that you can download with the very latest advice on uh, uh, policies and statutory requirements and changes that are forever coming in British education. So you can stay ahead, stay ahead using that advice hub. And these are just some shots from some of the roundtable discussions that we have throughout the different courses. Um, and we hope that you feel ever present um, because of the way that we built it and the questions that you're asked. I think we hope that you feel included in those discussions uh, and feel rather liberated and, and empowered as a result. So there we are. That's the uh, that's the pathway program. And if you'd like to uh, get in touch, 
please do visit the website, of course, um, the discoveryeducation.co.uk website. You'll be able to go on there, find out about Pathway, and you can actually uh, indeed book a chat as well. You can uh, uh, book a no obligation chat with the team. I'd love to hear from you as well, and we can have a chat about Pathway. I'm very happy to come and demo it, or demo it virtually, I suppose, give you a walkthrough of the, the programme with no obligation at all. It won't be a sales call. You can find out a little bit more about uh, how, to, how to order it um, and exactly what its impact will be. So I hope that's been useful for you. Just to remind you again, Mr. Birch and I will be talking all about all things immersion and ed tech and how we engage uh, and invest. Uh, that'll be in April. So I look forward to seeing you then. Until then, do check out Dave's uh, appearance at the Learning for Now conference earlier this term. I think you, you have the link. Have a look at that on YouTube and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. And let's hope there's some sunshine at the weekend. Right. Thank you very much indeed for watching and uh, have a great evening. We'll see you soon.